and welcome to Animal Adventures. I am Shane Brown, along with me is Ed Laquadera. And uh, before we get into your facility, which I, I was going to start uh, by calling it a little hidden gem in uh, Bolton, but from what it turns out, uh, this, this sanctuary that you are running now isn't so hidden. Word is starting to get out about, uh, about this place. Yeah, like we were talking offset, you know, some people know about it from far away, but then you have people right in Hudson that haven't heard of us before. So it's kind of one of those strange things, you know. How, uh, how long? Have you, uh, have you started, when did you start the sanctuary? Well, we've been in Bolton since 1997, so that's when we officially got a separate bank account and all that stuff. Uh, but my wife and myself both grew up doing animal rescue and um, just kind of turned it into a business in 97. Before we start bringing any of these things out, because I know all the kids right now are, are so anxiously awaiting to, to see what we have, how uh, now? How you acquired some of these animals? Are they sent to you? People are dropping them off. Yeah, most of the animals we have um, are somebody's pet that they no longer can keep anymore. Either the kids are going off to college, or the family's moving, or um, the laws have changed and they're no longer allowed to have it. Or um, some of the surrounding states you might be able to go to a pet store in another state and buy an animal that's legal there, but then against the law in Massachusetts. So then when they find that out they'll bring them and uh, you know most of the time it's from very nice people that just get overwhelmed or you know we do take in a you know some animals that um, you know could use some some care for sure I can say if I wanted to own a, a boa constrictor is that is that legal yeah yeah uh, you can buy a boa constrictor uh, most pet stores you know uh, I mean, how, how big are we talking well typically pet stores will sell baby ones that you know not more than a couple of feet and they can grow you know 10 feet so it's a pretty sizable snake. It's not a monster snake, but it's it's. So are we against everybody? I mean, you say somebody can I just go out and just get a boa constrictor? It's not. I'm not really for people. I, I don't understand if they. Well, yeah. If should, you. I mean. Um, well, here's here's the way. Here, here's what I what I think in in any in anything that you do is uh, if you do the research, um, and you know about it and you want it, uh, you know what you're getting into. Then I, I'm all for it. Um, you know, I'm not really. I've been you know. You know, I have an education and I've been raising animals my whole life, but I, I meet pe plenty, plenty of people that are well qualified. You know, I, I don't think it's rocket science. I think if you truly do your research on it, you know, I think most people are capable of taking care of the animals. I say we just get right into it. I can already tell the kids are getting so, look at it, look oh, yeah. getting so, so well behaved too. I, huh? They are, they're for <laughs> now. That's just why we gotta we just jump right into it. Yeah. What do we have? Today, what are we bringing out here today? Well, today we have uh, a Burmese python that we took in. It's a snake that grows quite large. So sometimes people, if you go and most pet stores uh, are very knowledgeable, but every once in a while, it's, it, there is a chance you could have someone sell you a snake that may not know all they should know about the snake. Um, so how big, of, how big is this guy? This snake is probably only nine or 10 feet, but it's capable of growing 20 feet long. So someone might go and buy it at 18 to 24 inches as a hatchling, and then uh, this snake is, this is fully grown. Oh no, the snake is probably lucky if it's a year old. We've only had this a short time, maybe a month or two months, um, but they grow fast. I've I've grown them up to 12 feet in a single year. So is anybody ready for this snake? Who's ready for a snake? All can right. We, can we, if we need volunteers, can we get a volunteers? A couple yeah, of you guys come up get, here and help us. Yeah, help well, us with this guy. Yeah, why don't we do this? Yeah? So that way we don't have any sad kids. All why right. don't we have? Uh, if you want to do it, just come right up here, and we'll stand you right here. Just stand. I'm gonna have you stand. See how me and Shane are standing next to each other, and put your arms like this, and we're gonna talk to you all about safety. Come up here, hon. And I have I have six you? children. Who are you guys? And five no? are girls, and my youngest two are oh. four and five, and this is how I hold snakes with them at home all the time. Could we put you. your uh, nice animals up here so they can watch? Would that be okay? And they can watch you hold the big snake. You guys ready for this? Okay. You afraid of snakes? Yeah, but and I don't really want to touch the snake. Oh, you don't, don't have to. It? If you want, just. Is it slimy? No, snakes are very dry. <laughs> they look slimy, but I promise they're not slimy. I wish I touched one before. Why so you know. Yeah. Okay, because what we're going to do, if you stand here, and then you know what? Not really. We'll put you right here, and I might have Mr. Brian come up too and hold the tail. So what's going to happen is we're not going to put a snake on your neck. I know sometimes we see that on some TV shows, but on this TV show you won't see that because that's not safe, okay? But what is safe is if you put your hands like this, and we just lay the snake right across your arms, then I'll stand over here and I'll hold his head. Is that okay? And now my youngest daughters are four and five years old, and we do this with them all the time. I'm six. Six, so you're, this is easy for I'm you. Six. Oh, so that's nothing. You guys don't, you probably don't even need me. Do you need me up here or no? No. 
<laughs> no. Of course I do. I really like to be on TV, so is it okay if I stay? Just so I can get some yeah. TV time? All right, thanks. All right. So I'm right, not Brian. needed, but I'm going to stay anyway. That is a real snake. Oh, it's because he's so warm. He's very squirmy. If you feel him, kids, he's going to be warm because we get his cooler that he travels in up to about 100 degrees. So he No, I would never touch a poison snake. If he was poison, I'd just have Mr. Brian touch him. So if, doesn't he feel warm? So this is a Burmese yeah. python. And can you kids say Asia? Asia. Now at school, do you have a globe? I like no. this. Do you have a map at school to look at? And did you, your teacher ever show you different parts of the world? I like this. this yeah. You won't find, we don't live in Asia, huh? We live in, where do we live? North America, right? And he's from Asia, and he gets so big. He's just a baby now. He gets so big, he gets too chubby to climb trees. And he can slither. But he doesn't slither fast, and he's sticking out his tongue some. Why would snakes stick out their tongue? What do you think? To smell. To smell. What's your name? Delaney. Delaney. You knew that? So he sticks now, out his I tongue. to. His head. I'm probably going to do that. Have you ever heard of insurance before? I love See, my insurance <laughs> company likes when I hold I like the head. This. But know what we can do? Why don't we do this? What noise does a snake make? And let's do this. He smells with his tongue, like Delaney said. Do you kids smell with your tongues? No. Have you ever tried to smell with your tongue before? Yes. Why don't we, you did? Let's do it again. Ready? Let's all go like this. Smelling anything? No. I'm getting nothing. So we smell with our nose and breathe with our nose. Now his nose doesn't stick out. It's right here. He breathes with his nose too. If you kids were going to eat, do you chew your food or swallow it whole? Chew. Chew. What about snakes? What do you think? They, they? just swallow. They just swallow it whole. That's crazy, isn't it? And they can swallow things many times bigger than their own head. Now, if you kids get a little nervous, do you, yeah, do you kids ever hiss if you get nervous? No. No? no. no. You can just talk, right? Snakes can't talk, so sometimes they make hissing noises, right? I like this snake. Isn't he pretty cool? And he's going to get yeah. at least twice this long, and he's going to be many, many times wider around. He, a girl, one of the, I've seen a girl that weighed 400 pounds before, a girl Burmese python. The boys like this guy here, Mr. Crush, he only he always weighs about 150 pounds at the most, so he's not going to be giant, but he's going to be pretty big. Look at all these brave kids. What happened to you? He's kind of pinching me a little. He's pinching you always. Sometimes on the side they have these thick scales. See how big the scales are? And if they curl up, it can feel like a little pinch there. Huh. Yeah, they do pinch well, me. So these guys like the forest a lot, and they can swim too. How many kids here can swim? Can anybody swim? I can. I'd love to. Do you ever wear armies? What? Do you ever wear armies or a, no, or a no never. too big? Never too big for that, huh? It is important for the audience to know that we don't feed live animals. I buy them all uh, frozen. I actually had a delivery of animals uh, come today. Um, today I had rabbits that were dropped off. Um, we do go feed mice and rats, and my rabbits come from a source that breeds them for the restaurant industry, mm -hmm. and then their extras uh, before they clean them. Uh, they have them euthanized and freeze them and, you know, that stuff, so. Now, but, uh, when they're eating, now, these, their whole jaw? Yeah, what it is is their jaw, um, like if you were to take an exam, you couldn't say that their jaw detaches because technically it's not attached by bone. It has, like, tendons and ligaments, but they stretch out much better than ours. So their jaw is not technically attached. And as they eat, it stretches out this way and also this way. And doing uh, some... Uh, studies. We've had snakes swallow things uh, close to 30 times bigger than their head. Such as? Uh, without frightening the without fri uh, Like big roosters and things like that. Really? Yeah. Yep. What, uh, what, else, what else we got here for the little guys? What else? Um, maybe a couple of lizards. What do you think about a couple of lizards? We're going to show you a small lizard and a big lizard. Okay. Now, how many kids have heard of the Komodo dragon before? Anyone hear that? I don't have one of those, but I have his cousin. Man, if the Komodo dragon bites you, it's very bad because their mouth is disgusting. It, like if you never brushed your teeth in your whole life and bit somebody, they would get very sick. And Komodo dragons have a really disgusting mouth. And what this little guy here, Tim, he's a little Timor monitor, and he has that same kind of bacteria. It's not as bad as the Komodo dragon, but I do wear a glove just because um, if, he, if he was to nip you, I know somebody, a friend of mine that got bitten, he got a very, very bad infection, and I don't like to take uh, medicine or anything like that, so. Um, so I just wear this little glove, and that way it's better. I also don't like small animals to bite because they can hurt their teeth. Did you know that? 
A lot of people don't think of that, but when an animal bites you, they can break their teeth sometime, and then sometimes their mouth can get an infection, um, and then they, they won't be able to eat. So a lot of times I wear the glove for their safety just as much as mine. Plus his claws are super sharp, uh, so he can climb. But this little guy is full grown. He's probably about six or seven years old. When he was dropped off, uh, I think I've had him for about a year now. I think they said he was like five or six years old. So this is a monitor lizard. There are 32 uh, different kinds of monitors. Some scientists say more, but I think there are uh, 32. And uh, he's full grown. So a Komodo dragon, when they're babies, are a little smaller than this, or maybe this size, and they can grow 10 feet long. Where is this, now where is this guy coming These from? guys are from different parts of, of Asia, like Indonesia and Malaysia. Now how did you come across? Mm -hmm. I hear someone had them. Um, I believe this was going to be an animal that was going to be a dad, and, and, and they were going to have a mom, and then have babies and sell the babies, and it didn't work out too well. So, um, you know, they're, they're a great little, uh, great little lizard. And um, the state of Massachusetts has made it so that people can get permits if they want to own these. The biggest uh, reason why they were illegal in the state uh, before is because they were all being taken out of the wild and they were worried about people getting sick and you know just having too many animals taken from the wild but now that they're born in captivity um, you know uh, it's okay you know okay. And you know what the word dinosaur means what? terrible lizard so you have dinosaurs on your shirt huh but I don't No, you have pretty flowers I'm just okay I'm just is that good his mm -hmm. you want to touch on okay you want to touch <laughs> Good. Yeah. He does. Just like the snake, he smells with his tongue. So I'll have you kids sit down because the next one is going to be bigger. Uh, you kids are behaving so well. We are going to bring out a lemur, which is a kind of monkey, but later on. So you just have to, that's a big now, surprise. These kind of guys know, uh, before we get into like, contact yeah. information, I would bring yeah. in touch with you. Yeah. Now, you will go and do parties, you go do uh, talks uh, to schools. Oh, yeah, we travel. Uh, the company's broken up into a few different divisions, and um, we cover all of Animal Ventures, covers all of New England, and we go to birthday parties, uh, old age homes, uh, schools, uh, scouts. And then I also, if there are any college students watching, I have another uh, part of the company, just my name. Um, and we cover anywhere in the United States, pretty much. You know? Now, if I were to call up for, for a birthday party or yeah. if we're having a block party or something like that, yeah. what, would you, what would you bring? Well, uh, 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 typically we bring like a, an alligator, a couple of snakes, a lizard, a turtle, some furry things like chinchillas. Uh, we have South American raccoons called kawadis, mm -hmm. kinkajous. Uh, skunks, just... Can't get used on, the, on your website. Yeah, right? yeah. Because my daughter keeps on bugging, because ever since I've been on it, she keeps on bugging me about They're that. They're cute. So basically, we'll make some suggestions that'll work best for, for uh, you know, whatever event you're having, but we also let you pick animals. If you say, listen, I'm having, you know, this kind of event, and I, or I really want this animal, and we'll be happy to bring it. As long as we can keep the animal safe and everybody safe, then we bring it, you know? So... All right, let's take a look at that, because I want to get into the expansion project. Yeah, yeah, let's so see we that. So uh, get oh, into sure. yeah, we want to see. Up next. Uh, now I'm going to show you another lizard that's the same age, but let's put our, can we use our best listening ears and our very quiet indoor voices? Thank you. That way we won't scare this guy. His name is Jekyll, and they're about the same age. So Jekyll is closer to the size of a Komodo dragon. He still has a lot of growing to do. Look at the size of that crate. How big do you think this guy is? Oh. Holy mother of pearl. Holy moly. What's he got? Right? Right? Fine. See? He looks cuddly, right? Would you keep this guy as a pet? Now, um, the, this guy here is what we call in the animal business uh, dog tame. He's super nice. We got him dropped off as a little baby. He's never bitten. Doesn't mean that um, he couldn't. We don't ever trust like putting our faces in an animal's yeah. face. You know, he's still a wild animal, so we always have to have a healthy respect for him. Yeah. And he's shedding his skin. He's always shedding because he's always growing. Reptiles grow their whole life. He's going to get uh, much bigger than this even. He's still going to grow another couple of feet and gain some more weight. I have one that's bigger uh, back at the center, but he's not quite as nice as this. So this guy here you find in different parts of Asia in a place called Sri Lanka and in Indonesia. You guys are going to learn all about those places in school. And when they're little, they like to climb trees a lot. And they call them water monitors because they're great swimmers and they spend a lot of time in the water. And he's one of the animals that are going to get 
a new home. So now that's that's what brings me into the facility that you have right now. Yeah. Is, which is decent size, but the more animals you're getting in there, the more crowded it's getting. So you're, you have an expansion project, yeah, which is going on right there. For, and for, for many different reasons, which would take too long to get into. We used to take in a couple hundred animals a year, and then the word gets out, and laws change, and this and that. Now we take in you know, a couple of thousand. So it's very hard for us to place all the animals we take in. So it, it, ones we can't place, uh, we had to expand. And uh, first we started off by putting a new office up and using the office space for animal space. And now we put up a new building and he's gonna have um, a nice big, I'll oh, get your questions one second, I promise. If we use our indoor voices and our best listening ears, I will answer all your questions. So he has a nice big exhibit. He has a new um, uh, pond is 10 feet long and five feet wide. And um, it's, you know, nice big area to climb. What'd you say, he's constantly shedding? Constantly shedding. Can I? You yeah. see this right oh, here? Yeah. Always shedding. Yeah. Now, everybody in here are cats, dogs? Cats, dogs, yes? No? Yeah, Some of you? Dogs. If you have a dog, he's always shedding. He's always leaving his fur everywhere. Yeah. Does it look anything like this? <laughs> no. No? You sure? You get a shot? No, this is just constant? So if you come to my house, you get monitor lizard on the See that? On the yeah, a little sofa. piece of this everywhere. See this? Here. Want this? Look how long that tongue you is, sure? huh? Here, go ahead. Do you kids remember what he's doing with the tongue? Who remembers what he's doing Just with his tongue? Just show that to everybody else. Who knows? Who remembers what he's doing with his tongue? What do you think he's doing? Smelling. Smelling. Good job, Amanda. So okay. yeah. Pick oh, yeah. this guy. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's good. He's good. Yeah. This guy's good. Yep. Wow, this feels you know like a like a purse. Yeah, or uh, not, that I, not that I have a no? purse. I'm just saying. This is, no, just they, there's like a lot. That. There's a lot of different uses for these animals. You know, <laughs> my use is this. <laughs> Now, does he make noise like the snake if he starts uh, to get no. nervous? Yeah, or? he can hiss and huff a little bit, but not too much. The biggest thing, if I keep him out too long and he, if he gets nervous, he'll, um, one of their defenses is to go to the bathroom. And I've been working with the animals literally my whole life, and when a monitor lizard of this size goes to the bathroom, it's still disgusting. You know? <laughs> I pretty much have an iron stomach. Nothing grosses me out. But when they go to the bathroom, everybody's going to know. It's the disgusting. neighbors are going to know. Everyone will know. Look at know. this. Everywhere. So. There's a little... See this? We Would you like to pick? Is it okay? Well, why don't we do this? One quick touch, though. Just come up real quick. I don't really want to. Do yep, there you yep. go. go you see that? He's getting a little restless. Yep. All right, ready? One quick touch. See that? Yep. He's okay. Ahead. Yep. One quick touch. So, how close are we getting to the end of uh, the expansion project? Um, it's how, how, it, how big? How many square feet? Well, it's, it's only 1,000 square feet, but there are only five exhibits in there. And, we, and it's 12 feet high, so we're using all the. Uh, we're using every single. Uh, inch in there for animal exhibit. There is no nothing else. There's What's no. the biggest? What do we have? What's the biggest uh, thing we got? I, I saw the uh, the Nile crocodile. That's huge. Yeah, the Nile crocodile is about close to eight feet now. He's going in. He's going to be gigantic. Um, he'll outgrow that building someday. And uh, we have uh, Jekyll and Rex going in. Uh, the other the two monitor lizards. Then I have um, about 17 to 20 alligators going in one exhibit. And then we have a 20-foot reticulated python and about a 16-foot anaconda. <laughs> so that's it. That's, uh, they're going to take up those exhibits. But we're, we're about, as far as dollars, we're probably like $10,000, $12,000 away. Um, and as far as time, it's, you know, as soon as, uh, you know, we're just, as the money comes in or as, you know, I don't pay something and give that to the carpenters, it's getting done. We're, just, we're doing it one way or another, you know, so. Uh, before we bring out the, the next guy, the, yeah. the, no, the lemur, how close is this to, uh, to like a monkey? Or is this, this is obviously from the primate family? Yeah, these are, um, did you want to do the lemur or do you want to see an owl first? I can do either way. Lemur, all right, we'll do the of lemur. Course, of, of course, of course, we all want to yeah. see the lemur. So we'll go with Mr. Shane, he wants the lemur. Um, it's a prosimian, which is a, called the lesser primate, though some new studies link it, I don't want to bore the kids, but some new studies link it exactly to a uh, modern primate. So it, 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 it's, it's a primate, you know. Well, we're waiting for Brian to bring him over, because uh, I'm going I'm to plug this a couple times during the show, yeah. animaladventures.net. Yeah, animaladventures.net. We can go on there, we can find out how to make reservations, we can find out the hours of operation, I know you have uh, parties yeah. going on, yeah, you we're have Christmas. Yep, yeah, we're open all year round. Um, any, uh, the only day we close is Monday, but if there's no school, we're open. So like Christmas vacation, we always have events. If you go on the website, we have everything from story hour to nocturnal night. The dino dig, I Dino saw, dig, which is, which is zookeeper for a day. There's a lot of stuff we do. So. All right, who we got? Uh, we have Tarzan, and Tarzan has an interesting story. Brian, do you think you could just get some of the, the sweeter things yeah. out? 
Here's a sweet tooth. You, any kids here like sugar? Couple, huh? You. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Get that for you. Anybody he seen is, Madagascar? Yeah. Right, all right. Is it, isn't he in Madagascar? Yep, King, King Louis. Louis. See? Yeah, King Louis is the uh, orangutan, and King Julian's the, the lemur. Julian. But you want to hear something. This is Tarzan, and in the lemur world, there is no such thing as a king, only queen. So all you girls would be the boss. It, and then the boys, they never get to boss around the girls at all. But if a fight breaks out, the girls have to do all the fighting, and the boys are kind of goofy and silly. The boys have scent glands. They have stinky stuff in their wrist, and what they do is they put their tail between their leg, and they put the stinky stuff on their tail, and they throw stink at each other. And then when it <laughs> smells so bad they can't take it anymore, they're like, okay, it's a tie. You know, let the girls figure it out and we'll just do as we're told. Now, he's just uh, a little over a year old, maybe like a year and a half now, I think. And we got him as a tiny little baby. Now, lemurs, if they have two babies, twins, the mom usually can only take care of one. So what happens if they're born at a zoo, then the mom will take care of one and then the zookeepers will take care of the other one. Well, he was not only born a twin, but he was uh, less than half the size of his brother. So he was very small and weak, and they called us up and they said, Ed, you guys love to bottle feed little animals, don't you? And I said, oh, my kids, my girls and stuff love it. And he said, why don't we send you this little lemur? And uh, he's been, you know, he's not, I will say, he's not the smartest lemur I've ever had, but he is certainly a lot of fun. And we'll see, he can jump in the wild, and I've actually seen it in my own yard. I've had lemurs up in the trees over 40 feet and had them jump right to the ground, <laughs> hey bud, and so they're very athletic, and the lemur it sleeps um, at night, and he's up all day, so about, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night, that's it, come on, can you climb with Spider-Man, there you go, about seven, eight o'clock at night, he goes in this little tent, and he goes to sleep for the night, so it's pretty cool, yes, Amanda, can we please pet him, can we please pet him, this one's a little tricky, so we'll just have him do one I more jump, I am shocked that Amanda then, had another question, I know. Let's I'm see. just can kidding. That's fine. Here, okay. Can you do one more jump? Come on. Okay. There you go. Okay. You should go up on Shane. You want to go up on Shane? You like? Like to be up high. There you go. There you go. That's not your good side, Tarzan. <laughs> they always give you the bad side. Come on, you. All right. So, see? Now, the reason why his fur is so soft, his bottom teeth are actually called comb teeth, and they stick out a little bit like a comb, and they groom each other's fur. So he goes with two other lemurs, and they groom each other to make their fur nice and soft. Oh, you, I won't let you get hurt, I promise. I promise you'll be safe. Isn't he cute? Yeah. I'm holding his leash very tight, and he has food in his mouth, okay? It's okay. Hey, good job. It's okay. You'll be fine, I promise. He's eating some dried fruit. No, the it's tail. It's called monkey jumble. The tail, uh, no, obviously it's hanging. Hang yeah. from the tail, or does it have well, uh, functions? This, this one, the tail is not uh, prehensile, which means he can't hang from it, but he does use it for balance, and they do use it to throw stink, and a lot of studies show that they use it to help find each other in the wild, too. You can touch me. Good job. Is that everybody? So he's kind of cute, huh? Let's have make him climb up like Spider-Man again. He loves doing a Spider-Man climb. Come on. Come on. There you go. Can you guys climb up like that? No. His hands and feet are actually a little bit sticky, and he has thumbs, but he, uh, primates like this even have like a big thumb on their foot so he can pick up things with his feet. So it's kind of cool, huh? Helps him balance on trees and everything. Check it now out. These guys are extremely intelligent. Um, they're, they're pretty smart. I mean, um, uh, maybe, uh, well, you were saying maybe not this guy, but not <laughs> mainly. Um, yeah, they, um, animals like this, you know, they're intelligent relative like compared to people no but as far as uh training them to do stuff like that like mow the lawn not that no <laughs> i wish I'm no i don't think i put this guy on my rider <laughs> but yeah they're, they're pretty smart they can figure some stuff out yes hon yeah. who knows where lemurs come from everybody say madagascar he was born in texas but lemurs in the wild are from madagascar so the little island off the coast of Africa. So now you can impress your teachers with your knowledge tomorrow, right? Okay. Oh, so he's oh he adorable. loves an armpit scratch too. He is adorable, but I always tell people never trust a monkey. They're cute, but they can be cranky. Their moods change really quick. Did you trust a monkey? Yeah, but he's a dinosaur. What do you think? Did you? 
Yeah. Should you? I was just seeing if you were paying attention. <laughs> I thought we just said don't never trust a monkey. Should we say goodbye to him? Do you kids want to see? Do we have time to do an owl? Okay. This here is Obadiah, or the kids call him Obi, and he is a Eurasian eagle owl. And this is the world's largest kind of owl. And a lot of kids see him and they say, we saw an owl just like that, Ed. Just, that's because his cousin, the great horned owl, lives right here in New England and has these big ear tufts. This guy here you can find, he has a, a big range that he lives in Europe and uh, the Middle East and Asia. He's all over the place. And this guy, they can find him in the hot desert and even in the cold, cold place we call a tundra. So he can handle all kinds of different temperatures. Do you have a question, hon? Do you have a question? Um, at the end, we're going to see if we can pet them, okay? It should be, it should be okay. Now, they have these big uh, horns here that some people think they, they help them feel with the wind, and other people think they help them look big and scary. We don't really know for sure. And how many kids have heard owls' heads can go all the way around in a circle, right? They can't go all the way. They can go, they go most of the way because they have a pretty long neck. And can you kids keep your head still and move your eyes? You can, right? Owls cannot, that's why he has to move his whole head and neck, he can't move just his eyes. And the owl's beak, if it nips my finger, it doesn't hurt too bad, but these claws here, called talons, those are what they use to hunt. So if an owl sees some food that he wants, they fly down and they pick up the food and they can fly away with it, and they're very, very strong. And owls have silent flight. That means when they flap their wings and fly, you can't hear them, they don't make any noise. You can feel the breeze though. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to open up his wings for you. He might try to fly, so I'm just gonna step back so you can see how big his wings are, okay? Ooh. There you go, buddy. Nice little fan. Yeah, he gets up a lot of air. Now how big is that wingspan? Uh, the wingspan of the eagle owl can be uh, over six feet long. This is a boy. The girls are about a third bigger, so he weighs about uh, four pounds, I believe. I have a female that is much, much larger than this, but she doesn't behave as well. Can I do it again? I can try one more time. There you go. Yeah, he's a nice owl. See? Now, what do they hunt? What do they eat? Well, in the wild, they'll eat any kind of uh, rodent. They do hunt other birds, even their own kind. Uh, foxes, I've seen video of them eating foxes and things like that, so. Uh, really, really, they can get a fox oh, yeah. that big? Yep. And, uh, photos from today's show, you can go to uh, our Facebook page. You can be found on Facebook as yeah. well. Yep, yep, uh, uh, Brian, that, is, that the kids saw come off and on, he handles all our, all that stuff. I'll just and, mess uh, it up, so I stay away from it. <laughs> <laughs> Next month, we'll be back. So uh, thank you for joining us. We will see you next month on uh, Animal Adventures. Thank, thank you, bro. Thanks. On behalf of uh, Ed and myself, have a good day. Thank you. <laughs>